what the church should be about? Yeah. And that other phrase, love, teaching our hearts to sing. Oh, my Lord. And that's what happens in community, right? In community, we sing each other's songs until our very heart can sing it back. Not only within these walls, but uh, throughout the world. And so I'm so grateful to be with you this morning. Thank you, Pastor Isaiah, for inviting me. Um, I'm just, I'm, you know, I have been here before back when Pastor Chris was here, but I've never been here uh, for worship. And it's just been good to, for my soul. And I don't know about y'all, but Basil just set me off. <laughs> I'm done now. I can go home. <laughs> What a delight. And, and so Basil and I, basically, we both uh, are into Avengers, in case y'all don't know that. <laughs> and I tried to get him to really be all over Thor, but he wasn't too big on Thor, but he's, he's big on the Hulk. So we don't want the Hulk coming to church because the Hulk might destroy the building. <laughs> but anyway, it is so good, and I am so grateful for this opportunity and so grateful to bring forth God's word. Let us pray. And so, God, we come to you this morning, and we are so grateful. We are so grateful that love grows here. We are so grateful that before we even showed up, you were present, and your very love has permeated this place. And so, Lord, here we are. We are your people. Lord, you know us. You know our needs. You know our hearts. You know our longings. And so, Lord, we simply ask that you would speak to us this day. Speak because we are your people and we're listening. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. You are our rock, our strength, our redeemer. Amen. Amen. In the movie, A Few Good Men, anybody ever saw the movie, A Few Good Men? I love that movie. It's, it, uh, for those of you who are not familiar, it's the story of uh, Lieutenant Daniel Caffey, who Tom Cruise plays that role. He's a military lawyer defending two U.S. Marines charged with killing a fellow Marine at Guantanamo Bay, uh, the naval base in Cuba. And although Caffey is known for seeking plea bargains, this fellow lawyer uh, who is played by Demi Moore convinces him that the accused Marines were most likely carrying out an order from a commanding officer. And so there's this courtroom drama where Caffey takes this risk of calling Colonel Nathan Jessup, played by Jack Nicholson, and he played that role. And Jack Nicholson comes in to stand up and he is insulted and disgusted. How dare you call me to testify? But Tom Cruise in that role continues to press and press and press and he says, I want the truth. And Jack Nicholson, his role says the truth. You want the truth. You can't handle the truth. And, and, and the truth is, I love that line, because even as I thought about this message today, what we know about the truth is the truth will shatter all our facades, our illusions, and our delusions. Priest and author Richard Rohr writes, before the truth sets you free, it tends to make you miserable. <laughs> The truth is not always easy to handle, and there are so many different types of truth, right? Hard truths, inconvenient truths, life-altering truths. There are some truths we would rather not face. The river called denial is a much better place to hang out. <laughs> truth is dangerous to that's the way it is or the way we've always done it. Truth disrupts the status quo, and, and a common deception is that life goes better with lies and half-truths. And we see it in all manners in our systems and structures in, in this society. In this morning's text, Jesus is in conversation with his disciples. It was his last night with them before he would be arrested and killed the next day. They didn't know it, but Jesus knew it. 
And the conversation in today's text was part of this pre-Pentecost story that took place 50 days before the day of Pentecost as told in Acts 2. And in this crucial conversation, Jesus tells his disciples that he has to leave. He tells them that while they are sad and grieving, it's a good thing. He says that because in his leaving, someone who will be critical to life without the earth, earthly Jesus will come. And, and, and that person, the third person of the triune God, the spirit of truth will come. In Jesus, mission accomplished and mission continues. And for, the, for those early disciples as well as for us today, we need divine, supernatural help in order to see and speak and live in our truth. For the truth that Jesus brings, it's a dangerous truth. It's life ending and it's life beginning. How great is God's love that God knew that we would need help, that we would need a present help, a very present help to give us strength and courage and boldness to live with and live in the truth. And so today we celebrate, we celebrate the birth of the church, we celebrate that we have a helper, we have an advocate, we have a comforter, or in the Greek word, we have a paraclete, one who comes alongside us. Are you not glad that you don't have to walk this earth alone, that you have one who will come alongside you, and, and not just every once in a while, but one who will come alongside you always. The Pentecost outpouring and the account of the actions of people who receive the Spirit in the book of Acts reveals that the Holy Spirit is as much an agitator as an advocate, as much a provoker as a comforter. The one who comes alongside to strengthen us for work, to muster courage, uh, to prompt us and provoke us to put one foot in front of the other, to get up when you want to stay down, to keep moving forward when you want to hold back. The Holy Spirit brings clarity for life as best we can know and as best we can live it. My mentor and one of the people that has been so instrumental to me in my ministry is Gloria Roach Thomas. And Gloria Roach Thomas was a pastor at Camper where uh, Pastor Isaiah uh, and Miss Jenny and, and we, we kind of hung out there. But the thing that uh, most people did not know is every morning Gloria would wake up and she would say, Lord, show me what you want me to see so that I'll know what you want me to do. And it was the way that she, it's the way she continues to live her life. And I always said, like, she's a seer. She would know things. But people didn't know it was because of that prayer. Because it was like, it was a conversation with the Holy Spirit. It was, a, it was an agreement that not her will, because her, her vision, the things that she would see would sometimes be faulty. But it was an agreement that she had been called to lead in a particular way. It was that she was clear that the church did not belong to her, but it was God's church. That it was about the way that uh, she wanted to lead God's people and be with God's people in the way that God would have her to be. So the prayer was about show her and help her. And I am so grateful. She is one of my answered prayers because uh, y'all know I love being United Methodist. I didn't grow up United Methodist, but I love it. But you know, there are not many people who look like me in the Minnesota Annual Conference. <laughs> and as much as, and, and so my question was like always like prayer, like, Lord, please, if I'm going to give my life to you, and if I'm going to be called to be a pastor, to be a preacher, to stay in this thing, Lord, please give me a mentor. And Lord, please, please, please give me someone who at the end of their ministry would still love you and still love your church, and still love your people. And so that was my prayer. And, and, and then I said, Lord, if it's not too much, could it be a woman? <laughs> Hello? And then it was like gravy, because she was an African-American woman. I was like, ooh, won't God not just answer your prayer? And so even as I think about that, that whole idea of 
seeking the clarity of the Holy Spirit, the question I ask myself and the question that I ask you today is can we live with the truth? Can we live with the spirit of truth when we find ourselves in places, on jobs, in communities, in families where folk treat dysfunction like it's normal? <laughs> Can we live with the truth uh, who prompts and prods us to be the one who names the elephant in the room? Because every once in a while, there's an elephant in the room. I collect elephants, and I love elephants because, you know, you can't quite miss. Well, the thing I love about them is, you know, you can't miss when there's an elephant in the room. They're either going to smell... <laughs> Or the fact of the matter is they are these beautiful, wise animals that impart wisdom. They are communal animals. And so when I ask that question about can we live with the truth, can we handle the truth, it's always like who will be the one who will set the elephant free so that everyone else might be free? <laughs> Can you, will you, will we live with the truth who comes to help us see and in seeing strengthen and guide us to live into our very own truth? I was in conversation with some, uh, someone a while back and we were discussing the importance of appreciating and owning one's own contributions. And you know, in case y'all haven't figured it out yet, I'm Southern. I grew up in Memphis. So every once in a while, you might hear a twang, okay, or a drawl. And so I said to him, we were talking about that, and I said, it's a poor dog that won't wag its own tail. And I could see he was writing it down, and I said, I, I want you to be clear. I didn't say it was a poor dog. It's a poor dog. So if you don't quote me, it's a poor dog that won't wag its own tail. And I thought about it because it is the truth of the matter. That wasn't always my story. And I know I live in Minnesota, and in Minnesota, we don't like to, you know, we don't like to toot our own horn, right? right? We don't like to be all that up front and center. But as I thought about it, each of us, we're on a journey. We're on a journey to our truest selves. We're on a journey of claiming fully who we are. We're on a journey of learning how to be unashamed and unapologetic to own the ground we stand on. And the truth is that there are things deep down on the inside and, and they may sit at the subconscious level, but there's a knowing, there's always this deep, deep knowing that we can't quite articulate. There are some truths that for whatever reason we can't fully claim or uh, possess. I love uh, the poem by Mary Oliver that talks about how uh, she had to, uh, real, it was like the leaves are dying, I'm not going to quote it correctly, but she talks about where she began because she finally realized that the only life she could save was her own. I love that. And that has grounded me because there comes a time, there's this time when synchronicity happens, where inner readiness and outward circumstances, they intersect. And the disjointed, seemingly random thoughts, they come together where God's word and mother wit and daddy wit and village wisdom and proverbs and it all clicks and it comes together. And the time when you're ready to trust that what you knew, what you've always known down in the inside, it comes out and it comes up and life is never the same again. And so this morning I ask again, can you handle, can you live with the truth who comes and abides and lives in and lives with us leading and guiding? One of my favorite life verses is Isaiah 30, 21, that says that uh, whether there will come a time, whether you turn to the right or turn to the left, you will hear a voice in your ear saying, this is the way, walk in it. Truth comes and it unsettles and it jars and it blows in like fire that burns away deception and rushes in with wind gusts that carries off everything that is anchored and rooted down and the truth just might make you miserable at first. And the truth does indeed set us free. Jesus used the word spirit of truth that meets us as we walk along the way and guides us into the possession of truth. 
E. Stanley Jones, a, a Methodist missionary, wrote that truth will take us out of the classroom, out of the church building, out of our heads, and puts the spirit of truth with us on the way. When living with the truth, we are not stuck dealing with questions. We're on a quest, a life quest. The Holy Spirit takes us by the hand and leads us right into the life possession of truth. The Spirit makes the word become flesh in you and in me. The Spirit makes the blood, Christ's blood, get into your blood and becomes you, the God God created you to be. And so can you live with the truth this morning? Can you live with this beautiful spirit uprooting and drawing and leading and taking you to higher heights and deeper depths? Can you live with the leaning not to your own understanding or even the world's understanding? Can you live with God through the Holy Spirit doing all the heavy lifting, taking you by the hand and leading you in the right way, the Jesus way, being your vision, your lamp, your light? I say to you this morning, we say yes. We say yes, Lord. We say yes to God's will. We say yes to this great gift. We say yes to God being with us in the spirit now and always and to the end of time. Psalm 139 says, where can we go from your spirit or where can we flee from your presence? If we ascend to the heaven, you are there. If we make our bed in Sheol, you are there. If we take wings in the morning and settle off the farthest limits of the sea, even there God's hand is there to lead us. And God's right hand will hold us fast. If we say, surely the darkness shall cover us and the light around us become night, even the darkness is not dark to God. The night is as bright as the day for darkness is as light to our creator. And so this day, this day, we give thanks. We give thanks to the Holy Spirit who takes us by the hand and guides us into the truth in every situation. I don't know where you might find yourself this day, this week, this year. We give thanks to the Spirit who helps us live in the truth and become the truth in small and real ways. We give thanks that the Spirit fills us more and more and more in truth. And in turn, God transforms us into living proof of truth. Amen and amen. Amen. Let us pray. And so, God, we do thank you. We thank you, Lord, for your Spirit, your presence. We thank you that all creation sings of the reality of you, of the beauty of blue skies, sunshine, trees where the leaves dance, Lord, on the limbs, the sound of bird song, the sound of water rippling across the ponds. And so we thank you. And Lord, most we thank you this day, Lord, that your very spirit calls us, grows us more and more in love. Amen and amen.